Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. So I'm just getting the boat straightened up to get fishing this week and I realized that I've had this boat for a little bit over a year now and I haven't done any sort of review after truly putting it to the test. So today we're going to go over some things that I love about this boat, some things that I don't like so much, and we'll go over some of the issues that I've run into over the year of fishing this thing really hard. So before we hop into the review on this Z521 Ranger, I'm going to be starting a new segment here in some of the videos every week, and we're going to be calling it Boat of the Week. And my friends over at Angler's Choice are going to share one of the boats that they have up for sale. We're going to do a quick rundown on it, and I'll fill you guys in on any crazy deals that they have going on. They've got a couple really wild ones right now, which I'll share after this segment, but let's hop right into it. So, measuring in at 19 feet 9 inches, it's got a 225 Mercury Pro XS on the back, a Lowrance Ghost trolling motor, two Lowrance 9 inch Elite Graphs with Active Target. We've got the 2022 Ranger Z519. So we're looking at a fully tournament ready rig here with ample storage and an amazing layout. I love how clean this boat is. The gray and black colorway I feel is timeless. I'm a big fan of the single console. It'll make that 97 inch beam feel even bigger. This Ranger Z519 comes equipped with a remote drain plug, remote charging port, a three bank dual pro charger, hot foot, pro trim, rod buckles. And one of my favorite things about this boat, as simple as it may be, are the push buttons at the console. That 519 is an absolutely beautiful boat. I think that anybody would be happy stepping into that and using that as your fishing platform. I'm gonna leave the Boat of the Week linked down in the description below. You can go click that to check it out for more info. And if you'd like to reach out with any other questions or inquiries about the boat, you can email my friend Whitney over at Angler's Choice and her email is wwatson at anglerschoicemarine.com. Last but not least, Angler's Choice has some crazy inflation busters going on right now. You can save up to 10 grand on a new 2023 Ranger Z520R and Z521R. And beyond that, they have a ton of other price reductions going on right now. I'm gonna leave another link down in the description below that will lead you directly to that page. So if you guys are looking for a new boat, a gently used boat, English Choice is the place to go. All right, let's get into it. This is a Ranger Z521. It's a 2010. It's got a 250 Mercury Optimax on the back. The Garmin Force is a trolling motor up front, and I'm running the Garmin 126 SV Echomap Ultras as my graphs. I'm gonna start off by saying that I'm very spoiled to be in this rig. It's the biggest boat I've ever run. Um, the nicest, I guess, as far as fiberglass rigs go. I love the trolling motor. I love the graph setup. There's a couple small changes that I would make to it overall, but we'll get into that in a little bit. The overall ride of this boat is phenomenal. It's a heavy, heavy haul, but that 250 gets it up on plane nice and quick. It handles rough water really well, being as heavy as it is, and this Ranger hull just feels solid. Everything about it just feels like it's where it's supposed to be, and I feel safe ripping this boat around. So starting up at the front, the Garmin Force was new to me. I'd never run one, I'd never even touch the foot pedal of one until I got into this boat. I was a little skeptical at first being that it's not a cable driven trolling motor. That's something that I've always used while fishing, whether it was in a John boat or the Gambler or any boat for that matter. I love having that direct connection with the trolling motor so you always know which way it's pointing. It's not like, uh, you know, a Minn Kota Riptide or anything with a wireless foot pedal. With those, it's a little bit more difficult. They're a little slower, they're a little laggy. So I was slightly worried when I got this Garmin, but it took about a day to get used to. It's super quick, responsive, and it's extremely powerful. It's a 36 volt system, or at least that's what I'm running it on. You can also run it in a 24 volt system. On full speed, this Garmin can pull this boat close to four miles an hour, which is insane if you think about it. Like, that's pretty darn fast. The only issue that I've run into with this force trolling motor over the last year of very hard use is that I had to change the pull cord out on it because it was cutting down to the cables and it was gonna break, but that was extremely easy. I have to say, actually, out of all the trolling motor cables that I've changed, this one is by far the easiest. So right behind the trolling motor, moving back, we've got the Garmin 126 Echomap Ultra. And I've got two of them. I've got one here at the console and one up front at the bow. I mainly keep this one up front with the live scope running. I think that it's 
an awesome setup. I truly love it. I have both of the graphs linked as well. So if someone's fishing in the back, you can see the live scope screen as well. And also it shares the waypoints. So if I drop one up here off the live scope, say I see a brush pile like 40 feet out in front, I can drop a waypoint there and it'll automatically share to the back graph, which is really, really nice. Now, one small issue I will say is if you're trying to run a split screen with a live scope and a map, it's a little bit laggy, so I wouldn't mind having another smaller graph up there just to run mapping so you can watch your contour lines and see any waypoints that you have. So obviously the front deck of this boat is enormous. You can easily fish two people up here. It's extremely stable. You can probably hold like 20 rods up here at once. And the storage up in this front deck area is insane. I love that I can keep all of my tackle in this giant center hatch here. I'm able to keep my running lights, tools, extra tools, extra rain gear, snacks, all that stuff up in these two front compartments here. And obviously you've got your rod locker here and this is maybe the one asterisk that I'm not a huge fan of with this specific boat. So I've only got a few rods in here right now but I've learned that I'm really not a big fan of the rod tubes that lead up to the front of the boat. So the handle of the rods sit on this tree here it's my two-piece rod, but you can see this one. It sits up on the tree and then it goes up into the tube which leads up to the front. And you can hold a really big rod, like up to eight foot, maybe eight six. But I'm just not a fan of the tubes because I feel like you can't fit as many rods as you could if it was just an open space. But that's really just like a preference thing and that's for me. I'm just not a big fan of those rod tubes. But it's not that big of a deal. So we're gonna move back a little bit more. We're in the cockpit area. I don't wanna go two negatives in a row, but I guess it's a bit of a love-hate relationship with the dual console. So it gives you a little bit of extra storage. People that are fishing with you when you're ripping around, whether it's bad weather or not, probably prefer having that second console, but it truly does make the boat feel more confined when you're fishing with someone else. If especially you're both fishing up on the front. I think it takes up a little bit too much space. And ultimately, I would love to have a boat with only a single console. I just really feel like it frees up a ton of space over this way. Again, it does add a little bit of extra storage. I keep stuff like cull tags and rags and cell phone, whatever it may be, in that compartment. As far as driving the boat, I love the hot foot. I love the way that this boat handles. I have the pro trim on here, the Mercury smart gauge, and overall the navigation on the Garmin Echomap Ultra is really good. I think that it's a great graph and the mapping on it is awesome. It's kept me safe over the last year. On the back deck, we've got the two big storage compartments behind each seat, live wells and your bilge area. I love the live well system in here and the storage in the back is also really great if you've got a co-angler for the day. So since I've picked up this boat last June, I've put a little over 100 hours on it. The motor's giving me zero issues. It's never given me a problem starting up. And truthfully, any issue that I've run into with the boat as a whole have been mainly wear and tear issues that if you fish a lot, things do break. So let's talk about some of the issues that I have run into over the course of the last year with this Ranger Z521. So the first small issue that I ran into was last summer. It was this selector valve right here, and it was actually just the handle on top. It was so hot out, it was last August, this thing had been sitting out in like 100 degree weather with the sun beating down on it, and who knows if it was ever changed prior to me breaking it, but I went to switch it to recirc and it just completely popped off. It really felt like it melted off because it was so hot, but either way, we got that replaced real quickly. It was really cheap and easy to change too. Another small issue that I had were the seals on the hydraulic steering. That was another one that was really easy to do. English Choice sent me a replacement seal kit. I went ahead and replaced the seals on the cylinder of the hydraulic steering arm, and then I just had to re-bleed the hydraulic steering fluid, which wasn't too difficult either. The last issue that I ran into over the last year inside the boat was one of my live well pumps went out. It was blowing a fuse. I think something had gotten either lodged into the impeller of the pump, or it just went bad. That could have been one of the original pumps that came with the boat in 2010. I'm not sure, but I went ahead and got a new cartridge for that and just replaced that this morning. It's all super easy, minimal things that don't take too much time to research and figure out what's going on and fix. But 
again, all three of those are things that are just wear and tear. If you're putting 100, 200 hours on a boat over the course of a year, and you're really using it, fishing a lot of tournaments, you're using the live well a ton, you're out idling around a ton, graphing, or doing whatever it may be. If you use a boat a lot, things are going to happen. And personally, I always look at them as a learning experience. That way, one, you learn how to fix it, and two, you can see if there are any issues that are going to arise in the future, whether that be on the boat that you're currently on, or if you get a new one, things happen, and it's good to be preemptive about it and know how to fix it on the fly, especially if you fish tournaments. So I look at it as almost a silver lining when these things go bad because you always want to have like a way to MacGyver yourself around if you're in a tournament and your live well pump goes out. Like I easily could have just switched my live well pumps if it was during a tournament, but luckily it wasn't and I was able to fix it. Now the only other issue that I've run into were wheel bearing issues with the trailer and again that goes along with use of the boat. The only way you're getting your boat for the most part from your house to the lake unless you live on a lake and you keep your boat in the water is on the trailer and I check them periodically almost every time I stop when I'm towing any boat but sometimes they just meet the end of their life and I did experience one critical failure when I was on my way back from Texas luckily it was only an hour from the house and I was able to ride home on the three wheels but these are vortex hubs on this boat so basically I just replaced the entire trailing arm is what it's called but I learned how to do that I've done it twice since I've had this boat one due to critical failure and the other because I saw it starting to lose the rear seal so these are just things you got to keep your eyes open for if you fish and trailer a boat at all there are going to be issues that you will run into eventually and overall I chalk all these up to use I mean I fish a lot I fish more than most I'm out three to four times a week sometimes more um, I've taken this boat down to Texas which was like a 28 hour drive one way and I trailered it every single day that I was there for the three weeks. I fished multiple tournaments, um, traveling three to six hours away from the house. And honestly, it's just gonna happen. There are things you gotta be prepared for and I've learned a lot from having this boat over the last year. I'm stoked to have it. I thank Angler's Choice very, very much. I'm so happy every time I launch this thing park the van and I get to walk down to it. When I step on it, I still have this thought in my head every single time. It's like, I can't believe this is mine and I can use this. Um, it's given me the opportunity to be able to take that next step. As you guys have seen, I've been fishing a bunch of bigger, bigger boat tournaments this year, fishing some BFLs and all of the English Choice events. And I'm planning on doing the same next year and maybe adding some more into that mix. But Overall, I'd give this thing a 10 out of 10. I'm just so grateful to have this boat, and I hope that you guys have been enjoying the content that it's allowed me to provide you. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this Z521 and the boat of the week. Let me know if you'd like to see anything specific in the future, and that's where I'm gonna leave you off. Really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for me, and check those links out down below for the boat of the week and my friends over at Angler's Choice. I'll see you guys on the next one.